So let's talk about Ron Howard's fish, or should I say mermaid out of water tail, Splash, starring Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah. Big Days Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a review of the 1984 fantasy rom-com Splash. Now, this was the first film to be released by a new company at Bena Vista, the company that distributed Disney's films, Touchstone. The film was directed by Ron Howard, as this was his second theatrical feature, but not his first directorial flick, though. Well, directorial flick, you know. Well, you get the idea. Anyway, because a couple years before this, he directed the film Night Shift. I have never seen it, though. But anyway, the film stars Tom Hanks, along with Daryl Hannah, John Candy, and Eugene Levy. Now, the film involves a young man who falls in love with a mysterious woman who is secretly a mermaid and was nominated for an Oscar for Best Original Screenplay, which was written by Lowell Gans, Babalu Mandel, and Bruce J. Friedman, who, of course, wrote the story with Brian Grazer, who, of course... Did the who of course produced the film because he and Howard, Mr. Howard, would go on to work on many other films together. Anyway, now apparently, I'm gonna say that you'd be surprised that this film got a PG rating for some profanity and some brief nudity. Don't worry, it was just the booty shots. And nothing else. You barely would see breast. So, you, again, you wouldn't see much. <laughs> okay, okay, that about covers it. Let's get into our story. In 1964, an 8-year-old named Alan Bauer and his family are taking a boat tour at Cape Cod. Alan is fascinated by something below the surface and jumps overboard in the ocean. And once there, he encounters a young girl and inexplicably finds himself able to breathe underwater. However, Alan is rescued and pulled back to the surface, and the two are separated. Since no one else saw the girl, Alan comes to believe the encounter was a near-death hallucination. Twenty years later, Alan is now co-owner of a wholesale fruit and vegetable business in New York City with his womanizing brother, Eddie. Freddy, excuse me. Oh, sorry, I, my bad. Freddy. That's John Candy. Through the years, Alan's relationships have failed as he subconsciously seeks the connection he felt with the mysterious girl. Depressed after his latest breakup, Alan returns to Cape Cod where he encounters eccentric scientist Dr. Walter Kornbluth. That's Eugene Levy, which actually he and Candy were both together starring on TV's SCTV at the time. Let's see. Where was it? Anyway, Cornbluth was on a diving expedition. When his motorboat malfunctions, Alan falls into the sea and is knocked unconscious. His wallet drops onto the coral below. He wakes up on a beach in the presence of a beautiful naked woman who is unable to talk. After kissing him, she dives into the sea where she transforms into a mermaid. While swimming underwater, she is sighted by Cornbluth. The mermaid finds Alan's wallet and uses a sunken ship's charts to locate New York. She comes ashore in the buff, of course, at the Statue of Liberty and is arrested for indecent exposure. Using information from Alan's wallet, the police contact him and the mysterious girl is released into his care. She learns how to speak English from watching television and is eager to explore the sea. Unable to say her real name in England language, she selects Madison from a Madison Avenue sign. She tells Alan that she will be in New York for six fun-filled days until the moon is full, unable to return home if she stays any longer. Despite Madison's occasionally outlandish behavior, she and Alan fall in love. 
Alan proposes to her, but she declines and runs away. After some contemplation, Madison returns to Alan and agrees to marry him, with the added promise of telling him the truth about herself after an upcoming dignitary dinner to welcome the president. Meanwhile, Cornbluth, realizing that the naked woman at Liberty Island was the mermaid he encountered, pursues the couple, trying to expose her as a mermaid by splashing her with water. His first attempts are unsuccessful, and apparently in, he ends up with multiple injuries. Finally, he infiltrates the dignitary dinner, splashing Madison with a hose and successfully unmasking her identity. Madison is seized by the government... Well, and a, well, agents, government agents, and taken to a secret lab, headed by Carm Blue's rival, Dr. Ross, for examination. As Madison withers away in captivity, Corn Bluth learns that the scientists are planning to dissect her, and he regrets his actions as he just wanted to prove that he wasn't crazy. Now for the ending, last act, you know the procedure, five seconds to stop. Okay, go to the description box below and fast forward to the time below to avoid any spoilers. If you've seen the movie already, continue on after the five seconds are over with. Thank you, here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Alan is shocked by Madison's secret and rejects her, but when he voices his disillusionment to his brother Freddy... He lashes out at him, reminding Alan how happy he, he was with her. Realizing he still loves Madison, Alan confronts the guilt ring Cornblow who agrees to help him rescue her. Impersonating Swedish scientists, Alan, Freddy, and Cornblow enter the lab and smuggle Madison outside. Freddy decides to be arrested in Alan's place, while Cornblow unsuccessfully tries to stop the U.S. troops from capturing the couple. Well, despite being pursued, Alan and Madison make it to New York Harbor. Madison tells Alan that he can survive underwater as long as he is with her, causing Alan to realize she was the young girl he had met as a child. Madison warns him that if he comes to live in the sea, he cannot return to land. She jumps in the water when the troops close in on them. When more troops attempt to arrest Alan, he jumps into the water after her but starts to drown as he can't swim. Madison kisses him, gifting him the ability to swim and breathe underwater. Frogmen enter the water to recapture Madison and Alan, but the couple fight them off and escape, and Alan leaves his old life behind, and the couple swims through the ocean toward what appears to be an underwater kingdom. End of story. So, what did I think of Splash? I think I remember seeing this long ago, but I can't remember. Now, as you might have seen, I got the DVD. This, of course, was the 20th anniversary release. Touchstone put out in 2004. I got this from Game Exchange last fall. I revisited it, so that way I would be ready to do this review. And, well, what can I say? I love this movie. This movie is just so good. Good and great. Well, <laughs> oh, you get the idea. But anyway, a great story and great characters. I really thought Splash was just so amazing. And of course, our cast, we have Tom Hanks as Alan, Daryl Hannah as Madison, John Candy as Freddy, Eugene Levy as Dr. Corn Cornbluth. Let's see. We also have, um, let's see, jo Jeff Doucette. And Dolly Goodman, Howard Morris, Richard B. Shull, and many more. Anyway, nevertheless, with it being the first film from Touchstone, it's just amazing. I really thought this was so good. I think this is a rom com. I think you'll enjoy. Again, great story, great characters. Music's pretty good by Lee Haldridge. And, of course, um, the soundtrack that came out, that includes, um, well, it, the love theme for this is Love Came For Me, done by Rhea Coolidge. And, of course, it was certainly no stranger to doing um, a 
well, main theme for a movie, because the previous year she did the theme to the James Bond flick, Octopussy, which, of course, that song was all-time high. But anyway, this song is definitely pretty good. So, anyway, with so much, with some humor and what have you, maybe with the profanity and brief new team, what have you, a first for Touchstone, Disney's new big guy uh, company. Where they will go on to do lots of other movies. Uh, and there will be many others to follow in the next few years. Some that I do remember, like, well, do you remember, or just more recently remember, like Adventures in Babysitting and Three Minute a Baby, which I'll review that possibly sometime down the road. Maybe there's a possibility, maybe later on. But you just stay tuned and find out. So the question is, would I recommend Splash? Hell yeah. This is one flick you've got to see. This is a great movie, and this would be perfect to check out. The movie is on Disney+. Plus. Unfortunately, the profanity and the brief nudity are, well, add to him. Well, the brief nudity is covered by, well, um, computer-generated um, longer blonde hair attached to well, to Daryl Hannah, you know. Well, they use that. Or something like that. But who am I kidding? But anyway, Ron Howard's direction was really good too, so definitely look into Splash. So, what are your thoughts on Splash? Please tell me in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel as well and be a part of the Big D Nation! Join me next time when I bring to you a review of Part 2 of the Twilight Saga, New Moon. Thank you for watching, and if you like this, you may want to see some of these other videos. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of another Tom Hanks classic, Big, which he would do this four years later after this one. Or, go to the upper... Or if you want some recent Tom Hanks, go to the upper right-hand corner and see my my spoiler-free review of Hanks' current hit, News of the World. Or, if you just want a little more bit of a good story, go to the bottom left-hand corner for my review of Twilight. Or, go to the bottom right-hand corner to click on the button to subscribe to my channel. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.